Hey guys, hope you're okay. This is Clinton Lofthouse and this week we have a tutorial which features around a new feature in the Luminar 4.2 update. So I've been using Luminar quite a while now and I'm really enjoying the options that it gives me on my images. Um, the way I use Luminar is through Photoshop as an extra filter but you can use Luminar as a standalone product to add your images in and use it as an image library but the way I use these programs I use them as a filter in Photoshop so let me just show you how I open it in Photoshop and then we will get on to the new feature which is a really great feature and I'm sure you'll enjoy everything that it has to offer so when you, this is an image here that I edited a while back. So I shot this model in the studio and then I shot this background here in person in Canada. So this was from a trip uh, two years ago. So we've got the image together now. Uh, we've got the background and the cowboy matched up, but I just want to add some features to this sky here as it's looking a little bit bland. So what I want to do now is go up to filter and then this is your filter gallery here and right at the bottom when you install Luminar 4 it will ask uh, to install it into Photoshop as well as a filter so you just click yes and this is where it appears at the bottom so we go to Skyrim software and click on Luminar 4 and the interface will load up there we go here is the image now inside the Luminar 4 interface. So now we are in the interface. What you want to do is just move over to the right here and you have your different options for the tools that you want to use. So you have Essentials, Creative, Portrait and Professional. We want to use the Creative tools today. So if you click on Creative and that brings up all these options here. So the feature what I want to show you today is the AI augmented sky feature. So basically this uses artificial intelligence to place objects in your image without you having to mask and then you can adjust them from there. So this is a really quick and easy way to get extra composite elements into your images. So for this image here I've got the guy, I have the backgrounds but the sky is looking a little bit bland. So what we can do is if we click on Augmented Sky, it brings up the Augmented Sky dialog box, which is here. So when if you click on Object Selection, you have all these different objects that you can click on and choose to put in the image. So again, when you're using this, you want to make sure the image that you put in your image is something that makes sense to the story or the feel of the image. For example, in this image here you wouldn't want to be putting a giraffe in because that would look ridiculous but what we do want to put in is something that enhances the image or the story so first of all I'm gonna click on the Aurora image here so we move up to the top and click on Aurora one Luminar works its magic and here it is it puts the Aurora straight into the background of the image. It masks it and it even places it behind our model. So once we've got the um, object into the image, we can then start to play around if we want to move, change things or move things around. So you can, you have this slider here of the amount. So again, this is a little bit like opacity and you can lower the amount of the uh, the opacity of the object so let's have a look so let's quite like it I mean they are supposed to be bright so let's keep that bright and then you have the warmth which for this uh, object I don't feel like we need to play around with but what that does is change the color temperature basically of the object so you can color match it more to the background of the image and then we have this relight feature so Read light, I believe it kind of just adds a little bit of brightness or ex brightens the highlights of the image, I would say. So again, for an image like this, you cannot tell much of a difference. It just fades it a little bit in, a little bit out. But for example, when you use a different object, it kind of brightens the uh, highlights or the structure of the image. So let's keep that on seven. 
So as we move down, we have place object. So let's say the object has been placed in a position you don't really think works. What you can do is click on this and then you get the transform box here. And then you can, if you pull down on the corner here, you can keep the uh, aspect ratio as you resize the image. Or you can pull on the sides like so and transform it. Although if you do that, it is going to not keep the aspect ratio and can make uh, the objects look a little bit fake. So let's pull that back up and let's just pull that a little bit back like well. So again, just clicking and pulling down. Let's pull across from this side. So again, as you can see as well, it's also masked behind the mountains, which is amazing. So let's just put that somewhere like here and then click place object again to get rid of the dialog box. So what we can do then is click on advanced settings. So the mask refinement, this slider is to refine the mask. So for example, if the AI put the object in, but it was bleeding over onto the model, you can then use this slider to refine the masking like so. As you can see, if you look at the mountains here, it just masks, refine the mask, it, re, it refines the mask over those mountains a little bit. And then defocus, this is basically blur. So what you can do is if you, we don't need to use it on this image here, but if you wanted to, you could blur the image. And then finally, at the bottom, we have edit mask. And what this does, it, it means you can man manually edit the mask. So by using a brush, you can, if you click on erase, you can paint away the mask if you want. So say if it was bleeding over the edge, you could paint it off here. If you don't want it on this side of the image, you can paint away from here. So again, you have full control over this once the AI has worked its magic. So let's uh, reset that now. So if we go up here, you can reset all the changes by clicking on this button. So let's try this again with a another background object. So again, thinking about the story, we could, uh, I believe um, that is probably the moon here, but for now we can delete that afterwards. But, but let's add a, a large moon here. Maybe we want a, a very stylized image with a large moon in. What we can do is go to object, object selection Let's move down our uh, different objects and click in. Let's try moon one. So we can have the moon rising up over the mountains like so. Let's just check what moon two is like. So we can go back up to the top, undo our changes, and then click object selection. Let's move down to moon two. Yeah, uh, I believe moon one was better. So let's go to the top. Let's undo that by clicking this little arrow here. And let's go to object selection and stay with moon one. So what we can do now, I quite like the placement of that, but let's just click on place object. Let's just move it around somewhere like so. And then let's just change the size of that. Let's make it a little bit bigger like so. press enter or press place object again then to get rid of the dialog box so what I'm gonna do now is let's just try relight so as you can see it's just adding extra light to those highlights because it's the moon we want that as bright as possible really actually um, and let's obviously let's just blur that a tiny little bit with defocus looks a little bit too sharp so somewhere like that let's let's try the amount if we lower the amount a little bit somewhere like there and let's just go back to place objects because it looks a little bit too let's lower that down a little bit and obviously but you want to adjust this to a point where you're happy. So somewhere around there could actually work as it ma now matches the tones of this uh, 
this guy here. So I don't actually think the mask needs editing. So there you go, that was a very simple placement of a moon into the background of an image. And as I said before, it completely, without you having to mask anything, it, it puts the object behind the elements in your image. So you can put it behind the mountains, you can put it behind the cowboy, and on the other side just makes it so easy so instead of you having to go to the trouble to mask out a, a moon or cut out a circle or create your own moon in Photoshop you can easily just add one in uh, I, I augmented sky in Luminar so let's just go and reset that and let's go up to cancel and click off so again I just wanted to show you a, a couple of various images so I want to show you this image as well and just see on a brighter image what elements we can add to that. So once again let's go up to a filter, down to Skylum and that will let us click on Luminar 4 <coughs> and then the Luminar 4 interface will again load up and then we can create some uh, AI sky augmentation with this image as well just to see how it works on a brighter more sunlit image. So again, let's go down to the creative options and let's click on augmented sky. Let's go to object selection. So let's add in, let's try the birds. Let's try birds three, see what this brings up. So again, so as you can see, the uh, birds have appeared behind the cowboy here. There is a little bit of here. So let's see if we go to advanced settings let's just check if we use the mask refinement if that pulls away the birds from the cowboy so if we move to the right it makes it worse so if we move to the left let's move it right to the left as you go oh, that's too far it does actually refine the mask on the cowboy here so what I want to do at the moment is I want to place the object. So let's move the birds somewhere. They're a little bit too high there. So let's somewhere around here and then press enter. So as you can see, the background is blurred here for depth of field, but the birds are not. So what we want to do is defocus to blur the, to blur the birds. So somewhere, let's blur them a little bit more. Maybe that's a little bit too much. So again, you have to do. You want to do this by eye. So let's take it down to 21. Somewhere like 21 could actually work. So one thing you might notice is there's no options to add another object. You can only add one object in this dialog box here. So what you want to do to add two objects. If I just move that uh, defocus, no. So what you want to do is. Um, go up to the layers panel here and what you want to do then is where it says layers if you click the plus sign or the plus symbol it will come up with the options for a new adjustment layer add new image layer and create stamps layer for the purpose of this we want to create a stamps layer and what that does is merge the layers together of the object in the image and then lets you then add something onto on top of the top layer so once we got once we've done that, if we go back to the creative tab, you now see that we've got the option to add another object on top. So if we go to object selection, let's try a cloud this time. So let's press clouds five. Let's see what this looks like. So the image is processing. So we have the cloud here. A little bit too far up for my liking. So let's go to place object. Let's then move this down somewhere like so can we move it to this side let's add it to this side it kind of works with that sunset over there like so and press enter and again um, the dialog box for the free transform disappears and now we have the clouds on this side so now we've added two objects to our image so again, if you wanted to add more, you could go up to the layers, 
click the symbol, the plus symbol, and then create stance layer. Once that merges, we could then go back to the creative. Like so. And if you wanted, you could add even another object in. So let's just let's be a little bit liberal with our creativity now and click on the rainbow. Let's load that in. Again, you can move that if you want. Somewhere like so. Oh, I want I want I want um, recommend adding any kind of rainbow to your images, <laughs> especially not when you're trying to create a fearsome cowboy image. But as you can see, we have now three different objects in the image and replace them with no trouble at all, mask them behind the model and could blur them and transfer them, tra transfer them how we wanted. So that is the basics of the new AI augmented sky feature. And it is a great feature for anyone who maybe is not the best at compositing or doesn't want to spend the time compositing but still wants to add elements to their images to enhance them or to create better stories or just to be more artistic. Um, and it's so easy to use. Um, as you can see, it's basically dialogue boxes with sliders. Anyone of any skill level can use Luminar and get good results. So the good thing about Luminar as well is that you can try it before you buy it. So you can go to the Luminar website and get the free trial and try it for 30 days, I believe. And then if you enjoy it, you can purchase it. So what, I'll, what I'm going to do is I will leave a link in the comments and I will also leave you a code. So if you do decide to buy Luminar, I can give you the code and you will get £9. Or I'm not sure what that is in dollars, but you'll get the same amount in dollars off your purchase of Luminar 4.2. So thanks a lot guys for watching this tutorial. I hope you have a good time and if you do decide to buy Luminar and create some images, please contact me on social media and let me have a look and uh, we can have a chat on there. Thanks a lot guys.